have to pay a premium to enjoy the white space that comes along with this penthouse unit. This entire project Something that's very interesting is that on this particular step, which is step 9-1, right where we drop off point, you have a gym. So we're gonna head in. Let's go. Permission control. We have the dog. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of our new launch review series on our PLB Insights channel. Today we are going to bring to you um, a District 5 project, um, but this project has not been launched yet and we are going to cover a preview um, in our review series today and joining me in the studio are Charlene and Felicia. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Alright, so without further ado, let's dive deep into this particular project. Hillshaw, um, I think it's a very interesting project in a very interesting place, I would say D5. Whenever we speak about D5, uh, Pasar Panjang area, there's a lot of hype right there, right now. Uh, I mean, of course, um, the Great Southern Waterfront Project is one of the big things that everybody's mm -hmm. talking about. But of yeah. course, when we speak about D5, we are also looking at an area where there's a lot of interest whereby people are buying there for rental, for example, mm -hmm. because yes. of the close proximity to NUS. Uh, the whole entire campus actually uh, have a lot of, like, I would say, potential tenants, even students as well. Or even um, workers or I would say employees of NUS that's actually working there, they will want to stay near their workplace. They will also be looking at the Pasar Panjang area right there. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you talk about that particular area, there's a couple of um, segments, uh, I would say segments uh, personally. Um, those areas that is right close to the Hapa Villa Circle Line Station, uh, you have like your Grand Hill, a couple of cluster of projects right there. Then you moved uh, more towards the western part, then that will be the Hill Shaw area. In fact, I think we will cover... Hugh Shaw, we talk about the on-block stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after Hugh Shaw area, then you have your whole entire stretch of projects uh, like your White Haven and all these projects um, that yeah. is a bit further away from the MRT station. Mm -hmm. right? But I think today, let's talk about Hugh Shaw um, and let's go into the project facts. So, Charlene, mm. you want to run us through? Mm, okay. So, the Hugh Shaw is actually a condominium in District 5. Mm. Uh, so, that is actually the Queenstown area. But then, uh, in terms of the address, they are under Pasir Panjang Road. Uh, 290 and 292 <coughs> and then uh, there are um, a total of 59 units uh, it ranges from 2 bedroom all the way to 4 bedroom dual key units um, the developer itself is Hills, uh, Hillside View Development Private Limited uh, which is uh, under uh, subsidiary of Frex Capital Private Limited mm. Right, and then um, there will be uh, two blocks of five-storey residential flats. Mm. Uh, and then it comes with like basement, car park, you know, there's communal facilities and even swimming pool. Mm. Right, so uh, total number of car parks uh, is estimated to be about 61. Estimated 61, in fact, is even more than number of units, yeah, which is quite correct. surprising. So, yeah. But mm. that's inclusive of two handicapped car park lots. Okay, mm. right, so yeah. it's basically one-to-one -one, uh, in mm. a way. Yes, and mm. then uh, site area-wise is about for four... 4,249. 4, oh, my eyesight meters. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very big, but I think it's occupying the, the it's a more like a rectangular kind of land, right? Mm. It's a yes. more deep in kind of land. Yeah, quite, quite um, mm. unique of that place. All the Pasir Panjang, they're all the longish kind of uh, layout. Because mm. yeah, right. everybody yeah. wants a piece of the sea view, right? Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So then, uh, in terms of the some of the key dates for this project, right? Uh, these are the new uh, latest information that we got yesterday. Mm. Uh, so, preview dates is around 6, 7, 13, 14 April mm. this year. And mm. then the official sa uh, sale date is looking at 20th April, mm. 2024. So, why do we say that it's a new date? It was because uh, Hugh Shaw, if you do recall, it was supposedly to be launched or previewed in January mm. this year. But yes. um, I believe the, the developer, Frax Capital, they have other plans for this particular project. Maybe they will want to take on a wait and see approach mm. to push it into a Q2 kind of launch. Um, mm. So, that because they do know that Q1, there are quite a couple of big launches, launches like your Landpaw Mansion, uh, Arcadi, so many, mm. so yes. many of them in, mm. in Q1. So, mm. probably the plan was a plan for them to push over into Q2. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I think the estimated TOP for this project, it's actually 2027 Q2, am I right? Yeah, estimated. Uh, was it here? Uh, no, no. So, because yeah, I remember the, seeing that yeah, estimated. the dates actually changed <laughs> quite a fair bit la. quite a fair bit so I decided okay. not to put that in uh, yeah. even for this show flat details right mm. uh, they previously mentioned it's uh, along Prince Charles Crescent which mm. is opposite the crest right. uh, but I'm not sure whether is it uh, is it still there but I think it should be la. but parking lots wise is quite limited yeah. only mm. 14 parking lots I there. mean if you're closer towards the date we probably will also announce in mm. our website as well la, in terms of the more details about this particular project in our PLB Insights page so do keep a look out for that mm. um, in terms of location wise as I mentioned earlier on this is part of an on-block project mm. uh, so this is actually previously was 
Gloria, Gloria mentioned. mentioned. Right. So you can see that actually the terrain based on this, uh, we are actually very close towards the whole entire NUS Science Park. Am I right? Science Park area. Yeah. Uh, but of course, right below that will be your whole entire Pasir Panjang Wholesale Centre. Mm. Not very close, mm. so not to worry on the kind of like noise or um, traffic of like trucks um, going in and out. I think this is more located towards the hillside. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we're also away from the whole um, highway. Mm. So in case you're worried about noise, I've, I've been there uh, myself also. There isn't too much of a noise you know, directly into your, your unit. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, it's an on-block site. So Gloria mentioned uh, previously was sitting on this land plot. Mm. Plot ratio, I think, is also pretty low, 1.4. Mm. Um, and this is actually the terrain of how it looks like. La. So mm. it's a very interesting. I mean, of course, right beside Gloria mentioned, it's a very unique project. Mm. Felicia yeah. have... Um, Client there, right? I, I used to market a unit in Palisade. Palisades. And, uh, yeah, it's very interesting because over there, every unit, because of the way it's scaled, mm. everybody gets the sea view, mm. everybody gets the open view. Of course, um, in composition, then you also trade off, there is also the west sun, you know, mm. as it is with the west side. Um, Gloria mentions right beside it, it has uh, more, I would say it's a flatter plain, uh, like flatter terrain. So yeah. it's um, probably going to be something that I'll be looking forward to because it's not... For Palisades, um, every unit is about 3,000 square feet to about mm. 4,000 square feet. So if you are looking into somewhere which is smaller, then probably Hillshore is something that you can look out for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Palisades, yeah. of course, has this very unique elevator system la, that is uh, very much like the Hong Kong tram. Mm. It is, yeah. Right. So it cuts right through the units that you yeah. see there, all the blue roofs, right? Mm. It yeah. cuts right through and then it opens both ways. Mm. Then uh, everyone gets their own... Uh, so sort of like a private lift lobby. Yeah. So, so this mm. is Palisades um, Hill, but what we are covering today is actually uh, right Hill Shaw, which is right over here. Yes. Right. Well, it's so good to know neighbours, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was sold, how much? 70 million? 70.3 million dollars. Mm. Frankster. Mm. So this is basically the, the sales price. And you can see that this was actually sold um, in 2018. They were trying to put out for sale right there. Mm. Uh, 79 mil, and then that was previously during a period of a cooling measure. Mm. And then they are studying, they went through on block quite a couple of times, right? Yeah. I think twice. Yeah. I, if I'm not wrong from the news, right? Mm. I think in June, they announced that, you know, they have been put up for mm. on block sales, $79 million. But because of the cooling measures that was imposed in July, which is the next month, mm. that's why uh, I think they couldn't sell it. But then in 2021, they tried again with a lower reserve price of $69 mm. million. Mm. And then uh, within... Uh, two months or mm. one month sorry then they got sold at 70.3 70 million la. later we will cover the estimated pricing for this project based on the break even pricing and mm. also the stipulated um, launch pricing for mm. Hillshaw mm. uh, but before that let's talk about the developer because this is a very interesting developer mm. if you are not sure of who Frax Capital is uh, we have actually partnered with them um, on a couple of projects, um, mm. especially for some of our landed homes as well. Um, they are not a small brand. They are not like unknown in this industry. Mm. They are actually one of a few developers. Of, in fact, one of the only one that offers a form of like a tokenization kind of ownership in their projects. Mm. Yeah, And I think they are well known mainly in the landed side mm. of things. Yes. So Hillshore is going to be something we should look forward to because it's going to be their first um, residential, you know, residential con apartment, like condo, condo kind of condominium project. Yeah. kind of project. So you can imagine the kind of quality that they will be replicating mm. from mm. the landed kind of experience. Yeah. yeah. In fact, um, if you don't know Rex Capital, they are subsidiary of then the Tong Eng Group, the bigger mm. Tong Eng Group. So that one is uh, definitely with a huge backing. Yeah, I mean, mm. in terms of financial backing, in terms of experience, in terms of all these kind of yeah. like construction know-how, uh, they definitely have all the right skill sets. Uh, yeah. And in fact, we are looking forward to what Hugh Shaw has to offer. Mm. Um, speaking of Hugh Shaw, let's take a look at the location. This is a much bigger map of where it is located. So this is basically in D5. Uh, NUS is right over here. Mm. You can see that this is actually a very big cluster and this is basically where all the other rest of the projects like your White Haven mm. uh, they are all located do take note Hapa Villa station is right over here mm. so where I mentioned this is one cluster this is a second cluster and of course this is a third cluster of the Pasar Panjang area mm. this is where Hugh Shaw is right yeah yes. right. Mm. right where the star is at yeah mm. so behind NUS is actually the healthcare uh, area as well which is the NUH building right. yeah. 
uh, below. Oh, below. oh, oh, oh uh, okay, okay. Above, uh, on top. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, this one. <laughs> near Kent Ridge MRT right, station. Right, right, right. Yeah, so actually they are located in quite a centralised uh, area mm. where there's a lot of potential tenant pools coming from all around. Like, you know, uh, just a bit to the side, you will have the CBD district, uh, the One North area. Mm. And then uh, they have a lot of uh, HDB clusters which are in the million dollar uh, range which we will share on later. Mm. So basically, I think this location is very convenient. Uh, mm. Haba Villa is just uh, right, you know, uh, I think maybe five minutes. Yeah, down, five, down ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. slow, probably. Uh, yeah, correct. It's just a ten minutes walk mm. or so. So and then the expressway is actually right at the back, lah. So, so actually, it's it's really co- very convenient. Yeah. I mean, if you I mean if you look at this area, of course, uh, you're being served by the Circle Line Station, and mm. we are always talking about this Circle Line Station in a way whereby if you look at this Pasir Panjang mm. area, these projects right over here, uh, they are definitely in a very quiet place. Mm. Uh, but of course, you enjoy a very close proximity to any. S yes. right over here but mm. y- you don't really get the uh, merits and the convenience of the train station because Circle Line right after Hapa Villa you realise it actually turns upwards and go over to Kenridge already mm. so it does not move here it will just turn right here so technically speaking the projects right in this cluster they still enjoy probably two MRT stations right over here mm. your Hillshaw will also enjoy the Hapa Villa station which is I believe one of the selling points as well for a freehold project mm. Um, mm. and thereafter um, you basically get some bus transports um over in this cluster right over here. Mm. But of course, uh, each location will have its own merits as well. You have your uh, West Coast West Park Coast right over mm. here. You have your Pasir Panjang Wholesale Centre right over here. And of course, uh, right below where my pointer is, this is actually the whole entire Great Southern Waterfront redevelopment. Yes. But mm. that will probably in the future. Mm. This is basically from the brochure just to highlight a couple of them of what potentially... Um, the view is uh, in fact this is actually not I don't say this not, is the view, view. not the view <laughs> it's not the view it's just a, the view it's more of an overarching um, yeah. you know kind of the orientation of where it is mm, actually mm. it's, it's uh, I think I it's the right the here the right whole this point is to show that Hugh is right in the middle mm. of all these amenities uh, transportation uh, shopping malls you mm. know there's even they have uh, indicated the NUS NUH mm. uh, what's that? central business district on the left and then you have all the shopping malls Sentosa on the right side yeah. so actually you are surrounded by all these convenience mm. and I believe this term has been coming up very often which is like the prime hexagon of PRV mm. so yes. this falls right within the prime hexagon yeah. uh, of where we think is actually a good area mm. if you, have, you have nature you have the sea you mm. have um, future shopping, development you have you have hospital <laughs> and all that mm. and, and you're near working places like one north maple tree I think mm. yeah pretty yeah. central yeah so so this is actually um, I would say very much like the overview of all the uh, facilities uh, around the area la. so they even have like a map the timing to tell you like you know is that like a shuttle bus service no right no this is the the time taken oh to okay get to right by places. car okay mm. okay right okay with the with a five minutes walk, I don't think you need shuttle service, but then, <laughs> yeah, mm. Hopper Villa Station is uh, within walking distance. La. Right. Yeah. Mm. So, this is the Circle Line part which you <coughs> highlighted earlier. Mm-hmm. So, basically, in 2025, uh, Circle Line will finally become a circle. <laughs> <laughs> so, with yeah. this convenience, it will actually help to improve uh, you know, transportation to all the various key places mm. throughout Singapore. Mm. So Technically, if you're from Hapa mm. Villa, you can just go right to Marina Bay area. Yeah, correct. Prince so Edward will be... Prince Edward, I think, is the the one that's closest to us. Uh, Tanjung Baga. Tanjung Baga. Panga. 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 <laughs> right, sorry, I was just trying to find the right term. Tanjung Baga, right. Yeah, the CBD district area. Mm, mm. Yeah, so in terms of like, uh, if you're talking about rental investment, right, I think uh, it will definitely help mm. once this circle line closes It's complete. Mm. Yeah, but mm. even for my own stay, I think I would like that proximity to CBD mm. as well. Yeah. Mm, correct. This is just an overarching of the overall uh, kind of like facilities in the whole entire area. You're close to nature, you're close to um, 150 Leisure, marina. Tourism, places, right. yeah. Yes. So, now let's take a look at the macro view of the project. So, as we, as you remember, that particular terrain is more like a hill kind of terrain. Mm. Um, of course, Palisades uh, is the one that is really on built on top of the hi- I mean, built along the terrain of the hill. Mm. Gloria Mansion is more, um, I would say, Flatter. flat in a way, mm. but there's still a two different kind of level, uh, which actually brings us to this side map. You can see that actually 290 and 292 blow f- uh, blocks. Um, 290 will be the one that is more closer towards the street level. Mm. Yep. And then 292 will be more elevated in some sense, la, right? Mm. 
dark. So you can see that actually a landscape deck, that will be the one that is actually in the middle. So where is the landscape deck? This is the one where you pretty much get your main pool. Uh, and then thereafter, you have a couple of um, smaller pools at the back and also the barbecue pit is actually um, right at the top. If I'm not wrong, on the next slide, you can see. Yeah. Yeah. On so level 11. There this is, is number 11, which is the oh, sky, sky grill. grill. So, but you have your yes. barbecue pavilion that's actually at the mm, back. Number 9 right over mm. here. But this particular diagram will actually shows you um, how they actually built mm. Uh, mm. Hill Shaw. Yep. Mm. So this is actually the facilities deck that is on this uh, in the middle. Uh, this is actually more coming back from the back where you're looking towards. This is actually where the facilities deck is actually mm. in the middle. Uh, and this is actually the front of the project. You can see that the whole entire color scheme is more towards the brownish team. Uh, I would say copper kind of like look and feel. Mm. I think it's basically to merge into the whole entire, um, uh, I would say the, the whole entire landscape in the area. Yeah. And I would say that, you know, the way that they built this actually offers, um, even on 292, which is the block at the back, it offers um, some form of like views of the sea view, like what mm, Felicia has really mentioned. So, mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Couple of decks right here, landscape deck on the landscape level, you have your level three, and then thereafter you have your level five. So level three, this is the one that you have actually your facilities at the back. La. So this is the one where you have, I think with your barbecue, play pool is right here, and then this will be your main pool. Mm. Did they mention the length? I don't think they have. No. I think no. It's quite a small one. La. Yeah, actually yeah. it's uh, interesting for such a small project, right? They have a badminton court. Badminton oh, court? Yeah. yeah, there is a no, badminton I think court. Up oh, right uh, here, like number two. Yeah, number correct. two. Badminton and we know court. badminton courts are very hard to find in Singapore, <laughs> yeah. even in public spaces. Oh, so, so we need a friend in Hillshaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's quite weird, uh, badminton court. Mm. It's just some um, artist uh, rendering. Yeah, definitely very unique. Mm. Yeah. I think this is at the back, though. I think this is at the back. This is probably the, the play back. pool and the yeah the barbecue pavilion, barbecue pavilion. Mm. Yeah, so this is basically the back because we notice that at the back it's actually a little park. Right now it's actually a park, but part yes. of I'm not too sure whether it's part of Gloria yeah, Mansion. Yeah, but it's definitely yeah, a park but now. This is right now being. Uh, I think this is actually at the back of the project. Yeah. Mm. In terms of units wise, fifty nine units spread across two blocks. Uh, this mm. is more towards an orientation of where. Uh, it will face. So, mm. in a way, the majority of the units, or rather, I would say that the terrain is actually uh, of a northeast, southwest kind of orientation. So, um, you definitely do get um, a certain level of, uh, I would say, evening sun on the northwest part of Singapore. And I mean, not Singapore, but of the project. And of <laughs> yeah. course, southeast is actually on the other end. A mm. um, couple of penthouse units, uh, four beders, three beder. In fact, Even I would say the there's two also two beders also. as well, yes. penthouse. Um, mm. Not very high floors. Higher floors is actually fifth floor. Then of course it goes up to the sixth floor mm. for the penthouse units. Mm. Actually, for right. for this map, right, uh, mm. you saw uh, what, the diamond shape, right? Yeah. So I indicated those in blues are actually the three beders uh, unit. So you see how the developer placed them. They are actually at the corners. They are facing towards like Pasir Panjang Road, uh, or towards the the inner mm. side of the project. Mm. Uh, and then uh, the Orange color are the two bedrooms. Uh, usually they are facing, they are in between the three bedrooms. So one is facing northwest and then the other one is uh, southeast. Mm. And there's one with a uh, more premium uh, facing, which is the northeast without the west sun. Mm. Uh, four, bed four bedrooms are more um, limited. So um, they are located on the northeast side as well as the penthouse units. Mm. Yeah. So, right. yeah, in, in terms fact, of. I realize uh, north, mm. In fact, I realized the four bedrooms is the one that's actually pushed all the way to the back. Huh? Mm, Probably yeah. because you have a clearer view mm. and also away from the sun, the, the afternoon sun. Mm. So you get the morning sun. You are probably, I'm not sure whether it will overlook the FM Global side mm. of things. So yeah. likely I'm to be a more wrong. premium. This should be the living hall area of the Four Vader. Yeah. So it allows right. like a unblocked Clear. view all the way downwards oh. or even towards this area. Mm. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for them to push it all the way to the back without a view, like, I feel. Yeah, correct. Three levels of a normal four-bader layout. Mm. Yeah. Let's take a look Either at the unit distribution. Yeah. Mm. Size-wise, I think this is, uh, in fact, a very good size. Mm. Two-bader, smallest unit you go for is 743 square feet. Three-bader, <coughs> smaller unit is 1055. I think that's pretty rare nowadays. Three beta compact is pretty much like... Under a, a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Probably even into 800 square feet. Yeah. These days. Right. 
And by the, by the way, this project is not under the new URA uh, harmonization. This is actually before that. So mm. uh, you still do get um, AC latch that is considered part of your strata yeah. space. But then again, 1055, um, I would say that it's a pretty good size for a three beta. Uh, premium goes all the way to 1184. Four beta starts at 1647. Uh, you can clearly see that over here, majority of the units is catered towards the three beta mm. yeah. um, layout. In fact, mm. the two betas layout it's also quite a good layout as well. Mm, yeah. You do get a dumbbell kind of look, which mm, is my yep. personal favourite. Um, mm. It basically minimises a lot of, un, um, I would say, unused space, like your foyer area. You Walk get ways. really good mm. space right inside. Mm. So maybe Felicia, you want to bring us through in terms of floor plans? Or right. So in terms of um, two bedrooms, there are, there are two types. Of course, one is the normal two bedroom and the other one is the two bed premium with mm. a study room. So in terms of two bedroom, there are two stacks. Then both layouts are those kind that we like. Enclosed kitchen, we have dumbbell layout, so everybody gets their own private areas. And then uh, you've got two ensuite bathrooms because um, one of the, co the common bedroom has the common bath mm. that's a Jack and Jill. Mm. So perfect, I would say, for a couple with a child or even just for tenanting, two separate tenants or family mm. tenants. Mm. Aircon latch, is a difference between the two kinds of layout for A1 and A3. So one is a combined uh, aircon latch in A3, the one that's on the right, that is outside of bedroom 2. But then the other one, uh, an A1, would be a separate aircon latch. Each mm. room gets their own aircon latch. So in a sense, in this way, your master bedroom for A1 would be slightly smaller if you look at the window space. Visually, la, visually, visually la. You it get might a smaller be window. because correct. You you and maybe it, it might be a floor to ceiling kind of window, then right. then you some somehow it's affected. But otherwise then um in A three then it gets a little bit bigger. Mm. Other than that, balcony size um not too much of a visible difference. Home shelter would be something different. So you see what we have highlighted in red. Mm. In A1, your home shelter is outside of your kitchen, mm. along the foyer. That's what is um, popular with people who likes to just chuck their things in, mm. you know, straight away after shopping. There are also the other type, um, A3, where home shelter is inside the kitchen. Mm. So this one is also for those kind of buyers where they like to expand their kitchen. They like to put their dry pantry, mm. right, their canned right. food and mm. all their necessities inside. Mm. So I think both layouts would mm. suit two different kind of buyers. Mm. Nothing good or bad, but yeah. Mm. Actually, I, I noticed the home shelter, right, for this type A3 is slightly smaller and then their balcony size is a bit bigger. As compared to type A1. Mm. Yeah. So if Certain you actually don't need a big la. balcony, you appreciate a bigger bomb shelter than that. Uh, Correct. Type A1 will be better. La, yeah. yeah. But one thing to take note of for these two beta, of course, you get a Jack and Jill kind of layout. You get two bathrooms mm, yes. separated. Yeah. But the common bathroom, just by the floor plan, we have not seen the actual unit mm. uh, in the show flat. But based on the floor plan as well, we can see that this is rather a compact kind of layout. Why is that so? It's because if you look at the shower area, this is more like a small little shower mm. area where the Shower screen is more towards like uh, it's slanted corner, in a way. Yeah. Mm. You don't get a kind of like standard kind of a shower area like mm. your master bathroom. So this yeah. is more towards a compact kind of like mm. bathroom. Uh, yeah. But both of them do not get any windows or uh, ventilation. So I would believe that these are all mechanical mm. ventilated kind of like bathrooms. Mm. Exactly. But of course you get the 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 better kind of like dual mm. own concept. I actually mm. do like that the developer don't. Uh, they don't have the two big one bath layout uh, here. Yeah, so I, mean I think they really focus a lot on like investors who yeah. wants to rent out. Correct. I think this year we are you. seeing quite a little, I mean quite less of a two big one bath, more of the two yeah. big two bath as mm. the base kind of like configuration and yeah. more of a dumbbell layout, which is a good thing, mm. which is a good thing. Yeah, and I think it's also particular to that area. If mm. you've been in D5 in Pasir Panjang, mm. you will know that the houses, the sizes are all great. Mm. So if let's say someone is um, coming out from a family, Living there, growing mm. up from there, they'll probably enjoy somewhere which is bigger. They mm. probably cannot see themselves in a two-bit one bath. So that's yeah. quite good planning over there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, next Only slide. These, uh? Yeah, so next slide, yeah, right, is because as we were talking about like the balconies and all mm. that, how big and all whatever not. It's quite interesting. They have this um approved balcony screen design, which is the, um I read as aluminium like aluminium Venetian blinds. Mm. Not mm. something that we always get. I'm not sure. Which I just googled it and probably those kind where it's retractable. So. It says right. they're proposed retractable and then they have gra glass railing at the bottom mm. instead of your normal, like mm. say, metal metal panel at the mm. bottom. So mm. it's to enhance the, the kind of view that you will get, mm. you know, whether Probably. it's a sea and all that. also to help cover the west sun. Yes. Correct. So yes. because majority of the units have partial west sun, right? Mm. So that's why they've got this approved, uh, which I think is 
good because everybody would be probably putting in their roller blinds and all mm. that anyway. So, yeah, mm. that's that's one thing that uh, is for you to note. Um, then over on to the premium unit, then of course we see between there are, there are several kinds of uh, premium unit as well. So we compare one of the largest and the smallest together. Mm. Uh, there are one, two, three, three stacks, three stacks, four sizes for two bedroom premium. Wow. Then yeah, so we compare A four, which is eight zero seven, and A five, which is eight five zero, largest mm. and smallest. So of course it's just difference of facing as well. And then of course, interestingly, in the A four, the smaller unit, you have this like serving window, if I'm not wrong, at the kitchen. You can see right behind the dining, right? Yeah, mm. I'm not sure whether that's like a serving window or something, but. Probably you can either if it's a wall, then you probably can take it down mm. as well. I think yeah. it's probably is a window to offer some some light that correct, goes correct. into the kitchen. La. Yeah, mm. so that's quite interesting. Then whereas the other one, then your kitchen is then just facing the dining and living directly, so they mm. get the light anyway mm. already. Mm. Yeah, so there's no need for the extra window. Um, in A four, it has also interestingly a larger study mm. than mm. the other one. So. Maybe visibly, uh, it just in floor plan, you can see that one is very squarish, one is more rectangular. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so though it's smaller, it's probably catering to those people who want a study. You can see like they, they put like almost literally a single bed and a study desk. Mm. So probably exemplifying how big the space is going to be. Mm. Yeah, and then you probably can put in a door yourself or some curtains and then you can be a storage space or an, a real study. Then mm. um, the, for the, the other layout, Oh, the, the other yeah, layout. Still, this one. Uh, this is still the still that layout, mm. right? In A, the next page. Oh, sorry, this one. Yeah. Mm. So in A four, you have a straight foyer, so it's the kind where you know mm. not much of a wastage of space mm. like people like to see. But if you are someone who values privacy a lot, then you might want to go for A five, mm. where they do a L shape kind of layout. So people, when they open a door, the delivery man probably cannot see into right into your living room. Mm. So those will be the some of the main differences, lah. Alright, mm. so now let's take a look at the three beders, which is uh, there's so many kind of units or uh, yes. types in three beders. So yeah. let's quickly run through them. Yeah, this one we can discuss all together because there's so many layouts. Yeah. <laughs> so for three beders, there are about eight layouts, One, um, different, yeah. uh, ra rather layouts and facing. Right, so I grayed okay. out those others, and you realize that of course they are spread all over. Mm. So then different sizes, also one zero five five all the way up to one one eight four. Mm. So difference of about. 100 plus square feet only. Mm. So not too much difference. So can look into it. So for this one, we again took the difference between the smallest and then mm. the largest to just for comparison sake. Mm. B1 would be your 1055. It's mm. southeast facing. And then your B4 is 1109 mm. for, uh, yeah, for the three better. You see the biggest difference would be your balcony. You can see that one is just a regular rectangle. Another one stretches towards the second bedroom. Mm. Mm. Yes. And then um, what happens in the left side, kind of the layout, the B1, right, is that for the second bedroom, they have the AC latch instead, the aircon latch, instead mm. of the balcony. Yeah. So then also what you can see is the living room and the dining for B1 is the vertical kind of layout. It's the Vertical. very uh, no sorry the Portrait landscape, landscape the landscape right. kind of layout where you get a wider mm. frontage mm -hmm. if you you want to say it that way, then I think you everybody gets a little bit more light and mm. and um, frontage. It just essentially. makes the place looks bigger. Mm. Yes, it probably will get more grandiose uh, the space the moment you mm. come into the house, and then of course the other one would just be your regular one where you have dining and living back to back mm. of each other. The very standard kind of like correct, portrait. but then of course you enjoy yeah. the light in your bedroom too. Mm. Mm. Correct. Okay. So this one is actually the premium. Yes. So premium wise, then it would be difference of also about only just a hundred square feet in sorry. terms of the smallest. Premium. Yep. And the biggest. Mm. Um, the difference mainly the would study. be also the landscape layout and the vertical layout. Oh. Then of course the study again one is uh, a little bit more um, open in terms. One is more open where it, where it's like. Right at the dining area, another yeah. one is right at the foyer, which, in my own opinion, has a little bit more privacy. This yeah. one? Correct. Um, yeah, so the right side uh, one has the study right at the dining area. I just feel area. that it's very weird to have such a big space right over here. You know, you'll be like wondering, like, what can I do with this space? Because yeah. you can't do much things right here because you'll be like blocking the entrance to the in kitchen. the kitchen. You can't put much stuff here. So, 
this space looks a bit like wasted yeah, right Yeah, maybe here. I want to mm. well, probably put a big round dining table, then mm. probably yeah, plonk in probably. a piano or something. Mm. Yeah. Or, or, or dry kitchen outside. Maybe, yeah. maybe. At but the household shelter that side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or else you can extend out your cabinetry. Yeah, mm. you're right, like a pantry towards the dining area. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it's more luxury of space uh, because you get an extra 100 square feet. Mm. Mm. This is the penthouse, right? Then, yeah, then we head over the penthouse. So, just now we mentioned there's two, three, and four bedders. Right. Mm. Um, two bedroom, you, if you are someone who likes lifestyle and you like, you know, good views and all, uh, views and all that, then you also have one. This is, this one is uh, only about 1,000, 1,012 square feet. Mm. So, instead of going to, to a three bedder, <laughs> going instead of the three bedder, then, of course, you get your study here in premium. Mm. Also, and then uh, it's just that it's uh, it's a top floor la. It's a top floor. It's a single. Mm. I think one zero one two it covers the void space though. Yeah, correct. I think it covers the void space. Yes, because you see that X over there. If right. I'm not wrong, it should be a high ceiling kind of thing. Mm. Yes, but um, th there's no indication as to you know whether there's void space charged or anything. Yeah. Zoom in. There's a void space. Exclude. Yeah, but that is the service void space. So the service mm. void not space. That one. Service void space is usually covered in this. Okay, so this which one is, which one is the service void space? This one. So this yeah, is an one. example mm. of a service void space, which is enclosed one, so you will oh. not be able to access it. So those will be excluded from, from a strata, strata area. But those that is open up, exposed, will be like this. Mm. Then this will be part of the, in the, the whole entire PA space. Mm. Yeah, it's the whole entire structure of how it's like. La. So Correct. an example of a... Uh, Service void space is this right over here, which is mm. beside the W uh, washing dryer. Mm. So this is not part of your strata space. This mm. is also not part of your strata space. Mm. But otherwise, anything that is outside, like your living area, this will be part of your the strata housing. space. Mm. Yeah, which explains the biggest um, square footage. Mm. Yeah, it could be like that. Mm. Um, yeah. But then again, we are we, we probably have to hear more from the developers mm. when they launch because over here it didn't say that you know the void space above mm. or like it's high mm. ceiling or whatever it is and how high is it yeah how high it well. is whether it's also part of the strata spaces because mm. there are some uh, developments where we realise they have mm. high ceiling but they're not charged mm. of strata spaces so this could be one of them that yep. we want to look out for mm. and then of course the three bedroom penthouse again you have that same big X out there so we're hoping for a high ceiling which gives them you know when you have a big volume of space like, it really then feels like a penthouse mm. uh, in terms of this one then you also have your master bedroom and your bedroom 2 all the three bedrooms essentially like, they have master bedroom bedroom 2 and then the bedroom 3 is always to, towards the back mm. Mm. but then this bedroom 3 actually has a rather good window space so I think I'm looking forward to that mm. it also has um, a study so which is why it says uh Premium, yeah. yeah so you have essentially it's good for a, a family mm. of four, even plus their helper. Mm. Yeah. But this bedroom, this bedroom three will be facing towards Palisades. Yes, correct, yeah. correct. Which mm. means that it's northwest facing. Yes. Yeah. Just to take note of that as well. Mm. Mm. And they have a bigger, much bigger kitchen. Yes. Three Very Fit good for size. Yeah. yeah. Because it has a WC at the back over here. Correct. Oh. And then it has windows because you know it's going towards the aircon ledge. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's quite smart of things. Yeah. So this was the four bedder penthouse. Yeah. So we have four bedder penthouse and then we also have the four bedder dual key. Yeah. I think this one there's quite a lot to see. Maybe we look at the dual key first. It's mm. quite interesting. Mm. Um very rare to have dual key layouts these days and especially when when, when a development is only like fifty nine units. Mm. Yes. So it's quite interesting what um they the planners are thinking. Maybe multi generational rather than only just um, rental. But rental play is going to be very strong here. Yes. So a family can stay in here, their parent can be in the dual key, mm. or their tenant can be in the dual key. Likely, so I, I think that I will choose to believe the later, la, which is uh, more yeah. towards the rental play of yeah. the close actually, proximity to... Correct, correct. Because actually we are in also in a very big uh, landed enclave over there. Mm. Your whole Faber, your West Coast Gardens and all that. Mm. So probably the parents won't need to stay in. La. They'll probably keep to their landed houses. Mm. Their children will probably move here and then still have a place to rent out to. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the facing of this dual key unit, right, is actually towards the northeast. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, I think northeast, the back part, uh, there's not much low, uh, high rise building. Yes. Right? Generally, over there are yeah. all quite, quite 
low plot ratio and mm. all that. But this so, one will be facing the FM global mm. that side. So there won't be like much uh, traffic noise. Uh, in the future, you know, when Pasir Panjang Terminal, they move, start moving things out, right? Then there's a lo- there will be a lot of construction going on as well. So I think oh. the northeast facing might still be better. Actually, yes. if you realise one thing, uh, you remember just now I mentioned that I would thought that this would actually be the living hall side mm. because it'll be facing down towards the sea, right? Mm. But in fact, it's not though. This is actually the back. This is actually all the wall. Mm. So technically speaking... Your junior master will have this view towards the southeast, mm. but most of your units, including your master bedroom, will be facing towards the back. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we're facing towards the back, which is the, the park, science park, the science park, park view, right? The, yeah, the all park the, and the then the science and stuff. park and all that. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Wayne, Wayne is thinking, not thinking, not listening to what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying about this <laughs> before you started saying. Oh really? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, starting it, eh? I was thinking no this wonder view. you got no response. I was like, <laughs> I say, yeah, we <laughs> they are facing towards the northeast side. Okay, okay, okay. Better <laughs> partner, better partner on that. Yeah, but because I was looking at the floor plan, I was thinking, why are they designing a four bedroom to look at the back mm. where the plants and the trees are, and not because there's greenery. Because there's greenery mm. over here. Mm. When you get to maybe see the, the Google s- Earth, or not. when you get to see back. the sea, you get to see the I sun. Also, mm. there will be people who are more keen to look at greenery uh, and then have just the morning sun. Opens up the Google Map view. Just to quickly show the area. This goes to show Earth how we all fan for our clients when we are <laughs> when we are doing all the analysis. We don't care what other agents are telling us. <laughs> oh. yeah, so if I move this right here, mm. so this is where Hill Shaw is right now. <coughs> so you clearly see that uh, this is Palisades, mm. right? So you have your block 290 over here and block 292 on the back mm. here. So, the view for the four bedroom will be looking towards here. Mm. Right, which is a bit... Hopefully, mm. they still retain the greenery at uh, the back. Yeah, so it'll be looking towards the green view. Mm. And but also, it's, I think it's a rather clear view. So, it's not like someone is in the face. But yeah. It, yeah. at least you know for sure you can avoid the sun. Mm, yeah. Yes. So, this is the view. Mm. We can yeah, always go up to level to five for your sunset view. Yeah la. I'm just five. just puzzled la. I mean, I'm just puzzled why why did they do that? But anyway, mm. let's go back to the floor plan. So this is a four <laughs> bedroom dual key, right? Okay. Yes. Are so we gonna talk about the four bedroom penthouse? Yes. House? Uh yeah. Uh, maybe let's look at the four bedroom dual key first, because I'm also trying to see whether like what uh what would someone how do I say it? it's actually a junior master bedroom that you have. Uh-huh. In the, the in the dual key thing, mm. so if let's say you you are a more matured family also looking to downsize from a landed, but then you don't want to downsize to too small, mm. but your you know your child is going to be probably getting their own house in the next you know five years or so, then you, this probably is also another place for you. He gets their own junior master bedroom. After that, when they go and get their own house, then you can rent it out to someone else yeah. mm. and then without having to compromise with your sp- space having to move and all that mm. so I would say rather good layout and then of course you have your big balcony the whole the whole stretch the uh, whole stretch yeah the correct if you don't need your yeah then you have your b- yeah I, I think it's generally quite good because dual key is just something that is very rare these days mm. I mean yes. name is so expensive today you can just buy one property and have the other one as an investment property exactly. that gives you the kind of like studio rental why not right mm. exactly yeah, because yeah. You know, buying especially one in this kind of space where it's near the MRT mm. Mm. yeah are we going to talk about this? Yeah, this is the I mean four the bedroom. This is the one that has a duplex look and feel. Correct. Interestingly, four bedroom penthouses are um, also several layouts. Uh, this one is one of them, B6. Six of them. Yeah, yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah, B6. This one is the one where you can get the, your sea view, partial sea view. You get your partial sunset view as well. Then, of course, you also get your double volume space. Mm. So, interesting here they let you know that it is a double volume space. Mm. Remember just now earlier, they didn't write about that. Uh, right. Yes. Okay, okay. So again, it remains to be seen. Mm. Over here, dining and living is going to be very grand in terms of the space because mm. you're going to have double volume. Uh, it's very befitting, right, for a penthouse, especially a four-bedder. Mm. So quite common. Uh, in terms of balcony, I think it's good space. Um, you have your roof terrace upstairs that you, for your barbecues and all that. Um, and it's the kind of duplex penthouse where your master bedroom is upstairs. Mm. It's not where the rooms are all downstairs. Mm. So then upstairs, somebody at least goes up all the time. And uh, yeah, so you have your privacy upstairs and then downstairs you have your junior master bedroom which mm. then can cater to your 
el- your, your other older family member mm. also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the other one. Oh, this is... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so this is the other four-bedroom premium. Correct. So yes. it comes with actually the study area. La. So this yes. is more like a little enclosed area. Correct. So yeah. you get your... This is a premium penthouse with a dual key as well. Mm. Very, very actually rare in my, <laughs> in my opinion to have dual key even mm. for a penthouse. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But definitely the developer must have seen something unique in that area, D5, mm. for them to be building something like that. Definitely not just rental, but a place. This is a whole Dwarf. studio by itself already. Yes. Mm. You get a roof terrace right here for your master bedroom. You have a roof terrace for your living hall area. You can yeah. have like a... Uh, this is really like a little studio layout. Correct. You have a master bar with two, ven- with two basin, which yes. is quite luxurious. Mm. It is. So probably if I'm the the owner, mm. I might then stay at the upstairs and then leave downstairs mm. to one whole one whole tenant. Right. <laughs> possible well, that's as me, well. La, that's possible me, as well. Yeah, mm. that's me. Because yeah. I have the everything upstairs also. Mm. And then I probably don't need to cook much mm. except for heat up for food. Uh, yeah. I think pretty much quite a couple of options. I, I think clearly with all these floor plans, you get to see that actually uh, the developer actually have in mind uh, what are the target audience and what yeah. potentially can you um, you know, buy the unit and then if you want to offer it up for rental, you have uh, various options mm. of the uh, rentability of the town of dual key kind of layout. Because most of the projects, when they offer dual key, it's only one kind of dual key layout. But for this particular project, despite the fact that having only 59 units, mm. but you do get a variations yeah. of a dual key layout, which, um, you know, it depends on what your, your, your lifestyle, lifestyle your is, options. you know, your options is, which mm. actually brings us to the next portion, the price matrix. So over here, mm. Um, we know that this is an on-block sale. It was transacted, mm. it was purchased at 70 million, 70 odd million yep. dollars, um, translating to a break-even price of 1868. Mm. Yep. Uh, factoring in a 10% profit margin, you'll probably be looking at a launch price of around 2000. Uh, 15% profit margin will bring you about 2001 PSF. Mm. So what we do over here, because we do not know the actual pricing for this project, we have done a ballpark figure of a range of between 2000 to 2350. Uh, just to have an understanding and an indicative of what uh, the potentially the pricing will be. So you can cl- see that uh, if based on 2,100 odd PSF, your two-bedroom will start pretty much in a price range of 1.5 odd million, close mm. to 1.6 million dollars. Mm. Um, then of course, your more expensive two-bedrooms will set you back to be about 2,001, uh, sorry, 2.1 million. odd million dollars. Mm. Three bedders in base of this pricing for a freehold project, I think is still pretty decent if the PSF holds true to what mm. we see right over here. Yeah. But you can see that there's actually quite a fair pricing, uh, if you yeah. ask me. This kind of range is where you are getting your 99-year leasehold options mm. in other parts of mm. Singapore. So definitely yeah. affordable. Which is why we are looking at just a three-bedroom comparison. Uh, over in the area, you have a couple of new launches. Of course, you have your Blossoms by the Park. Mm. Uh, that was launched earlier last year. You have your Terra Hill, which is a freehold project. Uh, and then you have the Hugh Shaw, but of course you have uh, other projects like your veranda, which is more towards um, the Harbour Villa station. Mm. That will actually is a freehold project, um, and that was actually built in 2021. Uh, you can see that the pricing wise is pretty much right now la, transacting is also around 2002 kind of PSF range mm. already. Mm. But of course it enjoys a very close proximity to train station. But Hugh Shaw, if we were to estimate 2001, I think we are still not far off. Um, from, I would say, the, the rest of the other projects in the area. Mm. So Fact- this is just a couple of comparisons, but do take note that over in the area, you have a lot, a lot of freehold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, project, a lot of freehold Majority. projects. Mm. Yeah, correct. This is something for someone who is who wants freehold still, mm. despite buying a new launch. Because a lot of people mm. say, oh, nowadays new launch, there's no more freehold plot of lands unless it's uh, you know on block site. And yeah. there you go, this is one of them. Mm. Mm. Taking a look at Terra Hill, I mean, of course, right now, as the time of recording, uh, it's still not 100% sold. There's still about 156 <laughs> units available. Mm. Uh, but I think Terra Hill's location is not as good as Hill Shaw because mm. I don't remember. Is it, I, think, you know, I think it's close to train station, Terra Hill, if I'm not wrong. You yep. flash it up. But pricing wise, definitely on a very high range. Uh, you're looking at 2008, on average, it's about 2006 to 2008 kind of PSF. Mm-hmm. Blossoms by the Park right now, transacted in February 2024. This is in, so in the range of 2004 to 2006 kind of PSF range. Right now, there's about 30 units available. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that in terms of pricing-wise, if, if 
Hill Shaw is going to launch around the range of 2001 to even 2002 PSF. Um, definitely is in a very palatable price range. But do take note, um, because we always talk about this kind of like quantum effect. Um, mm. Hill Shaw is actually a lower density project, 59 units altogether. So if you are one that um, like the kind of like small projects, you don't have, you don't like those kind of like bustling big mega projects, then yep. this will be probably one of, for them, for you to think of. Uh, but do take note in terms of quantum effect, because when you look at smaller units, if there are not a lot of transactions, then probably the valuation price would be rising slowly. Mm -hmm. But then again, this is a free home. You are not afraid of any kind of like form of lease decay. You definitely can hedge it against time. Yeah. You don't have to worry about any kind of like depreciation. So, you know, it's really for those who really like a kind of like small little development, mm. um, good location and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. In terms of growth area, um, definitely you'll be looking at you are a master plan. Uh, and this is something that we know that we are position in an area where there's tremendous amount of growth all around us. Mm. Yeah. Um, Charlene or Felicia, you want to share with us where this, what is this all about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the one in blues, right, are the business district uh, mm. development. So over there, there's a lot of subject to detailed planning. Uh, lots of developments going there. And then uh, on the right side, which is the orange part, that's mm. where all your uh, residential uh, HDBs are at mm. um, the one at below uh, in the grey portion. So this is where the Pasir Panjang developments uh, will be will be ongoing. The waterfront, uh. Yeah, correct. Mm. So there's actually really a lot of uh, <coughs> things that is gonna happen. You know, we have been hearing about Greater Southern Waterfront mm. uh, a lot. So basically, they will. Um, you see the the pointers one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Mm. So they will relocate the ports by twenty forty. Still some so, time. La. So it's actually uh, quite a long time. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> project. So yeah. don't think of buying there and then you immediately reap the re the, the, yeah. the effects right. and the so rewards of the Greater Southern Waterfront. Mid to long term kind of uh, game. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, they will also be extending the Pasir Panjang Park. Mm. Uh, and then uh, there's also Keppel Club redevelopment. Mm. So this 48 hectare site, right, will actually uh, house around 9,000 residential units. Mm. Uh, and then later on, we will share uh, out of which right, 6,000 are HDBs and 3,000 are actually private residential. Mm. And then um, they also have the Labrador Nature Park Network um, as well as Sentosa Brani. Uh, there is this island, yeah, yeah, Pulau Brani. So that will also be transformed into a leisure and tourism destination. Part of the whole entire Sentosa kind of redevelopment. Yeah, so many things going on <laughs> in the mm. next few years. Uh, and then I think the next part This is the one we have seen earlier So let's go uh, mm. to this part This is the part where you mentioned about Yeah, correct So Keppel I Club, think right? yeah, National Day, uh, Day Rally 2019 They have actually shared uh, You know, there will be a lot of uh, housing options Office district, entertainment mm. possibilities So the rejuvenation of this whole area Will definitely bring a lot of uh, um, Hype Yeah, hype into this area But it will be 10 plus years later. Yeah, la. it's a long term <laughs> investment. La. So yeah. you buy into the area where you know that there's future developments mm. in the area. You know that you are in for the growth. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And this is something that is actually mm. pretty interesting. Uh, so this is what you mentioned at uh, the mm. Kepler redevelopment. Yes. 6,000 HDB yeah. flats. Yes. Definitely so, in a prime, mm. prime area. La, yeah, as view. it is with every freehold housing, we always tell our clients that, mm. you know, we're not looking at um, investment in just for three to five years yeah. kind of horizon. Mm. Right. And since it's freehold, mm. you have that capacity mm. to hold all the way till all these probably materialize and then you um, cash it out later. Mm. And, and it's still freehold, mm. you know. Mm. So I, I would say is it depends on what kind of objective you want when it comes to your investment or your own stay mm. in this kind of uh, housing. Yeah, We yeah. also yeah. have to take note that uh, because of all these developments, right, there will also be a lot of ongoing construction that will be happening. Uh, so those people who are facing towards uh, southwest, yeah. southwest maybe. area yeah. might be affected South by... Southeast, maybe. Southeast, huh? yeah. Uh, yeah. Towards the, the Pasir Panjang mm. that area, uh, they might be affected... Uh, yeah. Somehow, mm. so that's why we were saying that the one that is facing towards the back the might north, not. Yeah. Be quieter much facing yeah, la, which correct. is probably why the developer placed the four bedders in that particular yes. part mm. of the whole entire development. Yeah. Mm. but still, I think because like we said, it's quite a distance away. Mm. So I think generally for Hillshaw specifically, it's mm. not too much of like an in the face kind of construction. Yep. Mm. So generally, correct. everyone is quite. Uh, protected mm. away. There's a buffer. La. There mm. is, there is. There's a buffer. Yeah. So this, uh, this... It's more like a summary map. slide, right? Yeah, I, I like. Cause <laughs> so it's like, wow, one side you have education district, you have the healthcare district, you have business district, 
there's all the million dollars HDB upgraders uh, going on, as well as there's future BTO or private project that's ongoing. So basically, mm. Hillshot is located in one location which has all these mm. uh, elements going on. Mm. So I think uh, if they are looking for rental or for capital appreciation, uh, yes, but sometimes it might take time, but then there are still uh, potential mm. still, yeah, for mm. this project. Yeah, but I think you are in an area where definitely there will be a lot of redevelopment work. And I think mm. um, right now we are hearing a couple of noises from the ground that there's quite a lot of like projects around the area. Older ones, they are all trying to go for an on block in that area mm. and largely they are all, all freehold projects. Mm. So, you know, if you are going in there right now, of course, we are always talking about time to market. You're talking about first mover advantage. Mm. Uh, you do know that you are packed in an area where definitely uh, in terms of, let's say, tenant supply, landlord supply or even, um, you know, for growth, um, even if you are staying around the area, you want um, upgraders to, to come into this area, you definitely get a lot um, and you are very close towards the coastline, mm. uh, which is what, I mean, I would say that quite a couple of Singaporeans, they like to move towards the coastline. Mm. Uh, it's a very different kind of lifestyle, kind of living. Uh, mm. You are close to West Coast Park. You are close to Cambridge Hill Park. Mm. You know, you are smack in the middle. I think in terms of location-wise, this is quite a good location. Mm. Plus the fact that you're not too far away from the circle line, mm. which is one of very one of the very connected, well connected lines uh, mm. in yeah. terms of the in Singapore. Mm. So, small projects. If you are in there, you know, and you want uh, to enjoy the kind of like serenity, close, uh, n kind of like community, mm. this will be one of the projects to to look out for la. As long mm. as uh, your horizon is about. 10 years yeah. and above. You, know, you don't, don't think about coming in here and then you yeah. buy for 3-4 years and then you want to flip, you want to make exactly, a profit. Yeah. Usually we see freehold gaining traction probably in the 10 to 15 years mark where it yes. starts to move upwards. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Also one thing to note, there is no primary school in the in a, vicinity. In a, in a, so yeah, mm. in the vicinity. Yeah. La. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's, those, that's also one of the characteristics of mm. the projects in that area. In that area. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. I think largely you are just pegging against the, the tertiaries like yeah. your NUS kind of students. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Any closing words, Felicia? What do you think of... Uh, always weigh your own options, um, mm. what are your objectives and then always uh, feel free to come back to us in Property Link Brothers for a consult when you need to. Sure. <laughs> Charlene, how about you? What do you think of this? Uh, I think the the location is fantastic. Uh, the only thing is the number of units is a bit mm. small. This project is a bit small. Uh, so, um, yeah. But other than that, rental play-wise, I think it will be fantastic. Mm. Yeah. If not, yeah, just see, you know, see what's your end goal and then you decide on your yeah. Yeah. yeah, personally, I think that Frex Capital would have something a point to make lah. Mm -hmm. um, largely because this is their first residential condominium apartment project. Because largely they have been doing landed homes, so for them, you know, for their maiden project, they would definitely wants to um, bring a point to the market in mm -hmm. terms of um, I would say quality in terms of uh, the kind of like uh, design wise. So that's the reason why when you look at the units, you know, you get a very good size mm -hmm. yeah. kind of layouts from two to four bedders. You have a variation of four bedrooms. Um, penthouse units or uh, dual key okay. units so you can see that they are really trying to bring variety and mm. in fact in terms of some of the units kind of configuration you pretty much get a very good utilization of space based on the dual key kind of I mean sorry um, dumbbell kind of layout so mm. um, I would say I'm quite looking forward to see what Frex Capital have to offer for the Hill Shore mm. so do take note of their launch um, schedule which is pretty much in April uh, and if you want to find out more about this particular project do hit us up um, you know contact our new launch consultants we are more than happy to share with you some findings or even um, down to the financial calculations mm. of the units the pricing wise of 2100 odd PSF is a ballpark figure mm. uh, we will look at um, what is the developer going to launch uh, closer towards the launch schedule and we will probably be updating our article in our PLB Insights page so do keep a lookout for that so with that um, I've come to the end of our new launch review for the Hugh Shaw hope you like our contents and do remember to subscribe to our PLB Insights channel for more contents from new launch reviews so do keep a look uh, I mean stay tuned for our next um, video with that take care goodbye